Good morning, Texoma, and thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Fitzwater, and this morning we are taking an inside look at a nationwide cancer prevention study, and Wichita Falls gets to be a part of this actually groundbreaking study is what they're hoping it turns out to be. Joining me now with the very latest is Reagan Neighbors. She is the Senior Representative Community Engagement for American Cancer Society. So, Reagan, thank you for being here Thanks this morning. Thanks for having morning. me. This study taking place right here in our own backyard. I know it's one we don't even want to have to have, mm -hmm. but one that you're hoping can save so many future lives. We are hoping to find some new information about what is causing cancer, what isn't causing cancer, and then um, hopefully find a cure. We won't have another study like this for another 30 years, mm -hmm. but how cool would that be if we didn't have to have one? Absolutely. But we found a cure now. And I love how you said you wouldn't even mind if you were basically put out of a job. Yes, of this, I love right? my job. I love what we do. I love seeing all of our fundraising going back to the community and, and helping our patients get patient services for free, things like that. But, you know, I've lost family members to cancer. I have one grandfather that is a survivor. And I would love one day for my future kids to mm -hmm. never know what cancer is. Yeah. You know, to ask, have to ask me, what was cancer, not what is cancer. Absolutely. Does it seem to be something that is growing to you know, it does seem like there's not anyone out there who hasn't known someone or maybe even has a family member right. who's been affected by cancer. Right, and a lot of people are, you know, that's what the study is about is figuring out why. You mm -hmm. know, is it the environment? Is it, you know, in the water or lack of water like sure. we have here? You know, there is a lot of cancer out there, but many things have happened in the past with the previous studies to where if people are diagnosed with certain kinds of cancer, they're pretty sure that they're going to come out on top but not everybody is fortunate enough to have that outcome. So that is what we are hoping to, to find out through the study. And what they're asking for is folks who do not have cancer, right. who have not been diagnosed with cancer, to take part. There are a few requirements, so if we'd like to go ahead and take a look sure. at those. Between the ages of 30 and 65, because our previous participants are getting older, we need a new batch. We are hoping nationwide to hit 300,000 participants, mm -hmm. so Wichita Falls can do their part with that as well. And also, they need just to be willing to want to be a part of the study for the next 15 or 20 years. It sounds like a lot, but all they will get is some surveys in the next three or four years that they will answer some of the same questions they will answer on the 24th of November. If some of those answers have changed, you know, obviously they do not have cancer now, but what if they have it in a couple years? Sure. Um, have their medications changed? If so, maybe that's linked to why they have cancer now. On the 24th, they will give four very small vials of blood. It's not anything strenuous, anything like that, and they will be in and out of the doors in 30 minutes or less. A okay. lot of people, you know, they can't donate a year of their time to be on a committee, You're or right. they can't donate any type of money, but 30 minutes of your time on that Sunday, that could be invaluable if yeah. your data shows us what is causing cancer. You know, and, and if you can be a part of the study and you don't come on the 24th and you hold that information, I just don't want, want to have that pass us by. We service 17 counties, mm. so there are many cancer survivors out there that they cannot participate, but someone can participate for them. And we're telling people, load up in you know, the Suburban and mm -hmm. come, come to First United Methodist Church that Sunday and, and take part. We will take anybody that, that can participate that day. And again, you have to be at least 30 years old. Yes. What do you need to bring with you when you come? Um, all you need to bring is if you register beforehand, you'll go to cancerstudytx.org, and you will fill out some information on there, and they will um, ask you to print off a piece of paper. If you, for some reason, don't have that, that's fine. We'll have it that day um, and a valid ID so that we know that you are who you say you <laughs> sure. are because you will then become a number in the database. You, mm -hmm. Your name will not be linked to the blood samples and things like that. Um, so it's very secure. Our, we have phlebotomists there that will, will draw your blood. It won't be me or a volunteer <laughs> or anything like that. And um, then all your data will be taken you know, to a secure location where researchers will start looking at it right now. Um, we fund researchers right now because the federal government won't, you know, won't give them money until they are at a certain level of their research. Mm -hmm. So some of those are so close, but they run out of money. You know, they're like a a new med student who has no money and they're yeah. that close to finding something and they have to stop because they don't have the funds. So ACS helps fund those researchers till the, till the government can, can pick it up. I love this and again it's Sunday November 24th from 10 a.m. to 1 30 so you know if you're going to church that morning you still have some time. Most churches maybe get out around 
noon at the latest or 12:30. So that gives you another hour mm -hmm. to kind of get over there. And, and if said. your service doesn't start till you have a late service at sure. 10, you know, 10:30 or 11, come beforehand. Um, and and that's why we try to have that range so people can participate. And it's at First United Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall. Yes, and we will have signs and and banners and things like that to show you, but it will not disturb their service. We did not want to do that. They were gracious enough to allow us to have that as a host site. We needed a big enough space for hopefully the record amount of people that will show up. Absolutely, and again, that is on 10th Street in Wichita Falls, 10th Street and Travis. You can see the address there on your screen. Is there a phone number they can call, you know, in case they had any questions? Well, they can call me. I will gladly um, answer any information, you know, or questions that they have. Um, it's 940-781-4393, or they can go on cancerstudytx.org and pull that national number up, and they can call and make an appointment as well if for some reason someone cannot get on the Internet to do so. Now, I know we're actually going to hear from a cancer survivor in just a bit about how important this study is to them, but Reagan, let me just ask you, you know, you've worked with the American Cancer Society for, I think you said six to seven years yes, now, six years. right? Mm -hmm. So what does something like this mean to you and the future you know, of this care for patients? I lost grandparents to cancer, and I have one as a survivor, like I said before, but I lost my grandma at the age of 10, when I was 10. Mm. And I think, wow, I wish she could have been here, you know, to see something like this. And I don't have any kids yet, but later on, when I do have kids, and when they have their own kids, I don't want them to have to lose me to cancer, you know? Mm. And, and my odds aren't very, aren't very good um, for the amount of people that in my family have had cancer. So. Mm. It's very important that we get as many people out there as possible. I don't know, it's just one of those pull at your heartstrings. It's easy, it's not difficult. This is a free study because of the money that we raise at Relay for Life and Cattle Barons Ball. It's going to make a big impact, you know, hopefully not only right here in our community, but nationwide. So you could not just save a life, you could save future lives from ever having this. That's amazing. Well, Reagan, we just appreciate you, you know, giving us some insight to this. And we are not done talking about this study, so stick with us, everyone. We will be right back with much more right here on Inside Tech Talk. Welcome back to Inside Tech Soma. Once again, we're taking an inside look into the American Cancer Society's cancer prevention study that is actually going to be taking place a week from today right here in Wichita Falls and Tech Soma. They are encouraging all of you, if you're between the ages of 30 to 65, to get out and take part in this study. Jackie Bush, she is a cancer survivor. Can you start with just a little bit of your story? I understand it starts 11 years ago. <laughs> 11 years ago, I was first diagnosed and heard those words, you have cancer. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, went through mastectomy and chemotherapy at that time, um, chose not to do radiation, but was told that there was a good chance, you know, that I wouldn't need that anyway. They felt like they had gotten it all, and with the chemo, it would kill off whatever else was there. And everything went along great, and then nine years later, which is two years ago, I was re-diagnosed with cancer again, and it did not come back um, the same place. It actually came back on my retina and on my spine, and we started with um, a different therapy and that was going along good. It helped diminish the tumor on my retina, but it wasn't really doing anything with the tumors on the spine. So we decided we need to go ahead and do chemo. And so we started that, um, and I only have two treatments left. The Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I will be done. So that'll be a lot of good things to be thankful for. And um, when I was re-diagnosed, and we decided to do chemo again, um, I was really dreading it because the first time I was very nauseous, I was sick a lot, no energy, um, just really not good <laughs> at all. But through different research efforts, they have been able to find where when they do chemo, if they add an anti-nausea medicine in the IV with the chemo med, that that cuts down a lot of the nausea and the sickness. They also can add a steroid that helps you keep your appetite so that you don't lose too much weight, which is always a concern. Yeah. And it helps you not get dehydrated as well, 
which can be real, used to be real concerns when you were doing chemo. And so the study that, they're, that we're working on now could hold some answers like those. In past studies with CPS3, the first study, they found a link between um, smoking and lung cancer, and that was back in the 50s. And then in the 80s, they found that taking aspirin could help prevent you from getting colon cancer. So they have found great things through these studies, and who knows what they're going to find this time. Maybe they'll yeah. find the cure. Yeah. That would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that, you know, my kids don't have to hear that they have cancer, yeah. or my grandkids. You know, I'd like for my grandkids not even to know what it is. Mm. And through studies like this, we, maybe we can get to that point. Does this, to hear that people in our community can take part in this in making a <coughs> difference, what does that mean to you whenever you heard that this was going to be opened up to Texoma? Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> I was very excited to find out that we were actually going to be able to do some groundbreaking yeah. things here in Wichita Falls. Um, we get left out for big studies and, and big research things because we're not a big metroplex area and they usually give those to those big metroplex areas. So being it right here in town, um, folks can learn, you know, they can learn more about cancer, but they can also participate where they can possibly be part of the cure. And I think that's wonderful yeah. for Wichita Falls. Absolutely. Uh, we don't get a lot of this here. Because they are wanting to see what causes cancer. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you have been diagnosed cancer survivor, you're not able to take part in the study. Correct. But you can find someone to take your place and do the study in your stead. And I love that because that's exactly what you've done. Yes. So there's just really no <laughs> excuse, right, for right. anyone. If exactly. you're not at a certain age or maybe you are a cancer survivor, you can get someone, encourage someone else in your family to kind of step forward. And Reagan, I just want to go back in case people are maybe just joining us or just to kind of hit home again with this, the fact that it's not going to take a lot of your time. It's not, you know, your personal information being divulged. It's very um, safe and secure. You will be in and out in 30 minutes or less. And, you know, a lot of people I know are saying, well, I'm just one person. What can one person really do to cure cancer? Well, what if you hold the key? Sure. And if you are eligible to participate and you don't come, that was our missed opportunity right there. Participants will get um, newsletters and things like that with updates from researchers that are actually using the information. So you will still know what is happening and, and get updates as well so you don't feel like, well, I just participated, now I'm in the dark. Right, I like you know? that. Yeah. So, um, and I, like I said before, I want this to be the last study. I want to find a new job and I love my job, but I don't love cancer. Right. <laughs> so we need, we need to find a cure. How often do you think you're going to have to be filling out new things? Is it going to be once a year? Is it going to be once every? No, it'll be about every three to four years, maybe five years. Um, you'll probably get four to five surveys during that span of 20 years. No one will call you and bother you, knock down your door, wonder why you're not answering. <laughs> but um, any information is valuable information, no matter what it is. Absolutely. Why is it so important for you to take part in this? I know you're going to be... Um, volunteering, a CPS3 champion, <laughs> and that, that is truly, I know, what these survivors are, champions and heroes in our community in a sense. I mean, someone to look up to and, you know, to cheer those other ones on and, and show them, you know, what you've overcome. Can you just tell me, is that why you're doing this? I mean, you're going to be out there volunteering your time. It really is. Um, it, it's a kind of twofold, really. Um, part of it is I want to show other survivors that even though you're in the midst of chemo yeah. or, um, or if you're even after the chemo, you can still do things to help bring attention to cancer and to research because that's where our answers are. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's where our answers are going to be. And even we can't leave it up just to people that don't get cancer or don't have cancer. We have to fight for it ourselves too. And um, the other part of it is I just, I don't want to have anybody else have to hear those words. They're awful. They are awful words. They break your spirit. They can break your heart. 
And it, I just don't want anybody to have to hear them. What keeps you going? Because you just seem so strong. What got um, you through this? My faith in God. My faith in God has um, truly brought me through all of this. And my family, my husband and my kids. Um, I also have six sisters. And I don't, want to, I don't want any of them to have to go through what I've gone through. Um, and really, the only thing that keeps me going, I think, is just my faith in God. He just keeps me going. He's not done with me yet. He still has things for me to do. I love it. You know, I mean, just hearing her saying the Mr. Chemo, yes. you can get out there and make a difference. Yes. That, it's just got to touch your heart, right? Yes, Reagan? well, that's the deal is, I mean, she doesn't always feel like she does really Sure. Well. Right. You know, after chemo, it's, it's, it's tough. So for someone who is not going through the cancer battle, the cancer journey, that can participate, yeah. why yes. wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, and so... We can't thank our survivors enough um, <laughs> for rallying and, and being that part of the American Cancer Society. All right, Texoma, just a small thing you could do, 30 minutes of your time. It's going to be taking place at the First United Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall in Wichita Falls. That's at 10th Street and Travis, 909 10th Street and Travis. And again, from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., just make sure you bring your driver's license. If you don't have time to get online, you said that's okay. Yes. Just show up, right? Show up. Right. We want each and every person that can be a part of the study to come. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for sharing your story. And, and thank you know, you it's so, so much for having us. Absolutely. We are not done talking about the American Cancer Society's groundbreaking study. <laughs> I like that. We're going to go ahead and claim that now right here on Inside <laughs> Tech Thomas. So stick with us, everyone. We'll be right back with much more. Welcome back to Inside Tech Soma. Once again, we're taking an inside look at the American Cancer Society's Cancer Prevention Study 3. This is, of course, kicking off next week here in Wichita Falls. And Reagan, you know, we've been talking about this one day, November 24th. Is this the only opportunity and time for people to sign up? Uh, for our area, yes. This is the one of the last studies of the year. So there have been many opportunities in other places of the United States, mm -hmm. but in our area, um, the 24th of November, that's going to be it. This nonprofit does so much in our area, and I kind of like to start with you, Jackie. I know you use the services. What was offered to you? Through the American Cancer Society, they offer a pretty me mm -hmm. kind of day. Cancer survivors can go in, and they have a licensed cosmetologist that comes in, and she shows you how to apply some makeup, Going through chemo, your skin becomes very dry. Um, you get these bumps just appear, and she really shows you how to kind of hide those and camouflage them a little bit so you feel better because you look better. And through the uh, Cancer Society, I mean, you go away with a bag of makeup, um, of like $250 worth of makeup, and then they also have wigs that are donated to them that are brand new and they're beautiful. They have some beautiful ones. And then they have hats, if you prefer to wear a hat. And they keep your head warm, but they keep your body warm too because you lose so much heat. It's just a wonderful thing. You go in just feeling bad <laughs> and you go in looking bad because you just don't feel like doing anything. And then when you leave, um, you everybody's always just happy. <laughs> they, they've got smiles on their faces, and they, they leave with their face made up. Some leave with hats, but most of them leave with a wig. And we had a ball doing that. Um, everybody kind of gave their opinion of e everybody when they tried on different wigs, you know. <laughs> yeah. They were like, oh, I like them. No, not that yeah. one, you know? <laughs> And so um, some of them picked wigs that everybody else liked on them that they probably wouldn't have picked for themselves, but just looked great on them. And so it was a fun time, it really was. And for that little bit of time, you kind of got to forget that you were doing chemo and, yeah. and feeling bad. So. And no cost to you, right? No cost at all, no Which cost. I know just a wig in and of itself can be expensive. Right. They can be very expensive. I priced them online and you know, you're talking a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars wow. for a wig. And um, these are very good quality wigs. They're very nicely made. Cancer treatment is not cheap. Mm. It's one of the reasons um, why we do so much in our community. And I feel like um, when someone is 
diagnosed, they are just at the lowest of lows. And if any way we can help them, whether it is through our 1-800 number where they can get other services as well, or um, you know, just being able to talk to someone else that's had cancer, you know, a support group, things like that. And we also have um, volunteer road to recovery drivers that drive people to and from treatment because we have a lot of folks that don't have a transportation to their chemo treatment and that should not be a reason why they don't get a treatment is because they can't get there. So we need to find a way to get them there. So without our volunteers um, supporting us and being advocates for us, you know, I'm just one person trying to do a lot of different things. So we need our volunteers and many are survivors that have used our services or their family members have. We have people that have, you know, they've had a daughter that's been diagnosed and that was their mission was to drive cancer patients and they've driven 28,000 miles for us. We actually featured yes. them on our community service champions. They were one of those and yes. it's an amazing story. So you have to go check that out. You can find it online, newschannel6now.com, mm -hmm. their story. And it, it, it is incredible, you know, how they gave back and how mm -hmm. that ended up helping them through a difficult time. But they still drive for you, Right, and correct? a lot of times mm -hmm. it's, yes, it's just a fellowship too for them because they, they get hit hard too. Absolutely. Sometimes we do forget about that. Mm -hmm. If somebody is looking for your services, can you tell us where you're located? Yes, we are um, located at Texas Oncology um, where we can give out our wigs and mm -hmm. things like that and our other services. But I also want to let people know that we are available 24 hours a day, 365 days mm -hmm. a year, talking to a live human being, which is really mm -hmm rare these days sure. <laughs> and um, say somebody's calling at three o'clock in the morning and they need just some answers they can't sleep mm. we will get them those answers but say they want to call again um, we will try to hook them up with the same person they talked to before wow. so getting people to call our 1-800 number is very important for their cancer journey and for their families we can do a lot we just have to to get people to tell if they need the help can you give everybody at home that 1-800 number mm -hmm. we'll put it on your screen right now for yes, you as well it's 1-800-227-2345 all right and you said mm -hmm. 24 hours a day correct yes definitely take advantage of that text Homa, if you need to and if you'd like to maybe help volunteer or give i'm sure that's always something that you're <laughs> yes, looking for <laughs> yes. well our patient services are free you know to our survivors and their families because of the gracious you know gifts that we get from the community mm -hmm. so we are always finding ways to fundraise and be out and about and whether it's the holiday parade coming up we will have some volunteers out there or we have um, even some of our teams that uh, fundraise year-round yeah. as well that really help us out and you know our Relay for Life is our big mm -hmm. fundraiser for the American Cancer Society and then coming up we have a Cattle Barons Ball in 2014 that will raise funds as well and they are raising um, some restricted gifts for lung cancer research mm -hmm. Um, research is very important and lung cancer is the number one diagnosed cancer in our area. Wow. Never would have thought of that but wow. you know let's find a cure obviously um, and let's figure that out at our CPS3 event. Absolutely yes. and again next Sunday Text Home I know we keep reminding you but that is the day to get involved. Mark your calendars November 24th 10 a.m. to 1 30 p.m. First United Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall. She said you'll be in and out in 30 minutes. The age is again 30 to 65 and they just need to make sure that they bring their ID and that you have not had cancer before is really the main requirement. Right, they can have had um, basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell, I always mess that up, squamous cell carcinoma, yes. some of the skin cancers. Okay. Um, they can have had that. They okay. Have, um, but, you know, no one that has had the chemo and the radiation because it changes mm -hmm. your body no matter what. So we can't really go into the study you know, with those changes already happening. We'll take a small blood sample. They'll only prick you twice if they can't get anything. <laughs> you will still be part of the study with your data, um, your answers that you have, you know, answered on your survey. And we'll take a couple of waist measurements, and that's it. 30 okay. minutes or less. All right. Well, thank you both for being here today. Thank you guys for having us. Thank Absolutely. Having we us. look forward to, you know, hearing how this turns out and hearing some groundbreaking information yes. come out of this. I know it's yes. going to be exciting. So. Yes. yes. Definitely stay tuned for that as well. Well, thanks again. And we want to say thank you, Texoma, for joining us this morning. We hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, we'll see you back here next Sunday morning for another look inside Texoma.